Hello everyone, in this video we'll be talking about CDK Watch. For those of you that are already using CDK, CDK Watch is a relatively new and unknown feature that can really speed up your development workflow. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what problem it solves, how it works, and then show you a usage example. And if you don't already use CDK for your infrastructure setup, I highly recommend you watch some of my other CDK videos where I explain the benefits of CDK and how it works. And so let's jump right into it. And at first I want to talk about a typical local development workflow. And typically when us developers are developing application code or setting up our infrastructure, we like to have pretty small development cycles. So we'll make a change, we'll upload that code into the cloud, we'll test it out, make sure it's working correctly, and then kind of repeat that process over and over again until we kind of get our expected end state. And so of course that requires us to start with our develop step where we're in our local IDE, we're developing our infrastructure code to set up our different resources, or maybe even a Lambda function or anything like that. And then once we're happy with that change, we will deploy that up into the cloud, uh, typically using something like CDK deploy, where it will leverage cloud formation behind the scenes. And the problem with this step, this deploy step, is that it can be pretty time consuming. Now, for those of you that are already using CDK, uh, in order to deploy a new change for infrastructure into the cloud, a bunch of different steps need to be performed. So you need to create a new cloud formation change set. You need to indicate to CloudFormation that you want to perform a new deployment. CloudFormation needs to take those changes, needs to make all the respective changes in the AWS services, report back its state to CloudFormation, and of course give you the result in your local console when you're developing. This can be pretty time consuming to do all these things, and especially if you're using something like a Lambda function, this may require you to upload your code into S3, and it basically adds more time to it, makes it less convenient and more time consuming overall. And then finally, once the deployment is done, then we finally verify that our code is working as we expect. So this development cycle, the develop, deploy, and the verify cycle is what CDK Watch is trying to target. It's trying to speed up this cycle so that we can make smaller changes more rapidly and have our updates reflected in the cloud for much faster development cycles. So that's where CDK Watch comes in. So let's jump into what CDK Watch is. So CDK Watch is a CLI command that comes as part of your CDK CLI tool that enables hot swapping of your resources. So for those of you that may be front-end developers or have done some front-end development in the past, Front-end development also uses this concept of hot swapping, and where it applies there is typically when you're making a change to your application, uh, you have a kind of a file watch system that's taking a look at all your project files and then detecting a change and instantly reflecting that in your new application code by refreshing your JavaScript or your CSS or your HTML. Now, CDK Watch works in a very similar way. So how it works is that it detects file changes and performs the corresponding updates in AWS. This is all based on your project directory. So when you set up a CDK project, it's in a certain directory. And when you launch CDK watch with the CDK watch command, it's going to start listening for changes on all the files that you have in that directory and performing the corresponding update in AWS. Now, the neat part about CDK watch is that it does not necessarily require full CDK deployments to update your infrastructure. In other words, CDK will hot swap if possible or else do a full redeployment. And the circumstances in which it will do what's called hot swapping in this case is kind of limited but very useful. Now let me explain. So hot swapping will occur for three distinct circumstances as of now. So if you're developing a Lambda function in your CDK project, hot swapping will occur. If you're developing step function state machines or the step function state machine definitions, it will also be a candidate for hot swapping. And finally, if you're creating or modifying ECS images, that will also hot swap. So hot swapping in this context means that as opposed to creating a new cloud formation change set, as you typically would in a full redeployment, CDK Watch will go ahead and directly call, for example, Lambda APIs to update your function code. So if you're making changes to your Lambda function code, it's going to automatically detect that and then call the Lambda functions update code API or update function, whatever it is, and immediately those changes are gonna be reflected in your AWS account. So much, much faster than having to do a full redeployment, which introduces all these additional steps that need to occur through CloudFormation. So this allows for those much quicker development cycles. Now, obviously, if you're adding a new piece of infrastructure, like you're adding a new queue or you're adding an S3 bucket, 
then that means you're going to need to do a full redeployment. So any addition or removal of AWS resources will require a new CDK deployment. So because CDK Watch is in some cases going through CloudFormation and in other cases going directly to the, some of these AWS services via APIs, uh, that means that CDK Watch is ideal for dev environments and not for production use cases due to a CloudFormation phenomenon called drift. And if you've never heard about drift before, it is when changes are made to your CloudFormation stack without CloudFormation knowing about it. And this can cause your application to get out of sync between what CloudFormation thinks it needs to update and what is actually reflected in your AWS resources. So you really want to avoid drift in any production use case. Using CDK Watch is definitely not suggested for production. For production, you just want to go through your normal CDK deployment workflow. However, if you're using CDK locally, then you definitely want to consider using CDK Watch uh, for your development environment. So that's a little bit about what CDK is. Let's just take a look at a quick usage example to understand a little bit about how it works. Uh, so first it starts with us running the CDK Watch command in our terminal. And one small thing, um, you also need CDK version 2.0 or above. It is not supported for any version below 2.0. So you run CDK Watch and that triggers the system to start monitoring your project directory. So you can see here in this example, I was working on something where I was developing a Lambda function. So there's a whole bunch of different files here, a whole bunch of different directories, and CDK is starting to examine all the different files and waiting for a change to occur. Now, say for example, I make a change to my Lambda function code, which is a hot swap candidate as a reminder, CDK is automatically going to detect that. And so this is the subsequent screen that you'll see. Uh, so you can see that it's automatically detecting that a change occurred. And if you take a look closely in this little red box here, you can see uh, I made changes to two different Lambda functions here. And because it was a function, CDK knows about that and it knows that it's hot swappable. So it will perform that hot swap by calling the update function API in your Lambda function. And just after a couple seconds or so, you can go and check that out in your AWS account and do some other testing there. So that's essentially how it works. Now, you may also be asking yourself, what about CDK local development? So a lot of us are using CDK, especially if you're developing something like a Lambda function, uh, to run your Lambda function code directly on your development machine to see how it performs before you upload that into the AWS cloud. Now, personally, I believe that local development is still the preferred way as opposed to using CDK Watch. However, that may not necessarily be true for some circumstances, such as like SQS integration with a Lambda function, where you kind of need to have it set up on the AWS account in the cloud to start consuming those messages. However, I do think that local development is still the preferred way for making changes to your Lambda function, just because you can do a couple more things, such as generating your own test events, so you can pass those in directly, and then you can change them very, very quickly. You can also add debugger lines and step through your code incrementally to examine its functionality. However, I do think that CDK Watch is useful in some of these other circumstances. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about here with CDK local development, I do have another video, which I will link below, where you can learn about how to set up and use CDK for your Lambda function local development workflow. So if you enjoyed this video, check out these other ones on CDK on the right. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.